morning. We want to welcome everyone on this beautiful, beautiful Sabbath day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it because we are in the house of the Lord, and we are here to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we want to thank the Father for His Son and for His Holy Spirit. Let us worship Him together this morning.
appreciation bud that we wanted to give a few gifts to uh, some of our pastors. We have a lot of people here who pastor. Uh, Orban does from time to time, and we so appreciate that. And Ted helps us, and we appreciate that. And even Sam has helped us a little bit, and we appreciate that. But we have these gifts we want to give out. The first is Pastor Vera. You don't have to get up. I'll walk right here. <laughs> it's these two that I'm trying to remember. Uh, this is for Jillian. And this was for Jason.
this morning what we need is the presence of the Holy Spirit. We want His grace manifested before us this morning. Loving arms around them and give them comfort. 
Lord, we just pray that you will be with each and every one. We pray for our country today. Lord, how our country needs you. Lord, we pray for every elected official. Lord, may they know, come to know you in a personal relationship with you. Lord, I pray that they will seek wisdom and understanding. And Lord, we pray for our military men and women all over the world. We pray for Tyrone and we pray for uh, Robert, my airman. Lord, I pray for all of those that are overseas. They don't know what tomorrow will bring, even later today. They never know. So, Lord, we pray that you'll be with them. And, Lord, we want to give you praise today. Lord, we pray that you will continue putting your healing hand upon Waylon. Lord, but today we want to thank you that he's alive. We thank you for touching his body. You're still in the prayer answering business. And, Lord, help us to keep our you out of the box and let you go around answering prayers. That brings glory and honor to your name. Lord, you know what he needs. And Lord, I pray that you will continue that healing presence in his life. Lord, we thank you for each one here. We thank you for traveling mercies for those that have been gone. Lord, you put guardian angels around them and we're so thankful for that. <laughs> Lord, we pray for our Tuesday night. Not for the holiday because that's not what we're celebrating. Lord, may that fall harvest festival be a harvest of souls. Lord, send workers. Lord, you know the workers we need. And Lord, that will put their loving arms around others and bring them into the church, into the kingdom. Lord, may we be your witness Tuesday night. And Lord, we pray for our gospel singing on Saturday night. Lord, be with Paul's journey. And Lord, be with uh, Praise Incorporated. Lord, sit fill this whole place with your presence. Lord, we want everything that we do be bring people into your kingdom, and Lord, may it bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, this morning, we have a lot to be thankful for. The fact that we can be here. And Lord, we are thankful for Carmen. Lord, would you be with this family? Lord, would you put your loving arms around that family? Give them comfort in the family who's child killed Lord we just can't imagine so give comfort today Lord we pray for our church here on the corner of 26 and Vicki we thank you that you've kept us open all these years but Lord you're not done with us yet so we're going to thank you in advance for souls that come in that workers that come in and for your presence here in our services we give you praise for that in thy name Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the touch of angels' wings. I see glory on His face.
said I'm loud right now. I'm glad I dressed for the occasion. Yeah, please. Yeah. We'll sing a verse and uh, Devin's date of tongue, and then we'll sing it in English. We'll all sing it together. And then we'll just give praise to the Lord. We'll sing praise God. Check one. My native tongue is English. Your native tongue is Choctaw. <laughs> That's what he says, but you know when he was little, he couldn't even speak a lick of English. All he spoke was I, I could not speak English at all. And they sent me to public school and made me learn English. So now I forgot the Choctaw language. Hopefully as I get older, I'll get, pick it back up or something. I hope. But as for Waylon, uh, well, it's kind of like a, an aneurysm in his stomach that he had, uh, or like a blockage or something in his intestines and stuff. It's just something similar to that, and that's what caused him to black out. He fell down some stairs, and uh, he was at his friend's house over in Yukon, and uh, he, they didn't even know they had gone to bed that night. And he was landed on somebody's porch, I guess you could say, and they came out, and he told them to call the ambulance. And that's what got him into the hospital. He's doing a lot better. They got him all fixed up and everything like, uh, the other day, and uh, he got out of the hospital Thursday evening, I believe. And last night he was at the OUGMA gospel singing. And we got out there and sang with a group called the Carpenters last night. We were just sang one song with them. But it was good to see him up there and able to walk up there and still sing for the Lord, you know. Amen. And now I believe that Waylon has got a great testimony. And I look forward to the day that he'll be able to come here and tell that hopefully in January when we open for reviews. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to work on beer for that, but I don't think it's working. I might have to take her out to Madison's or something. So we know how to get to her. <laughs> but anyway, just keep well in your prayer that he'll finish healing up. He was opened up all through his stomach all the way down. So. That's going to take a while, you know. Waylon, he loves to cough every day, you know, so that's going to hurt when he coughs and everything. So y'all keep him in prayer that he'll just be healed 100%. Amen. I have been reminded of 
your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Louis, and in your mother, Enos, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan and to flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So did not, so do not be ashamed of your to testify about our Lord, or ashamed of me, His prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us into a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has not been revealed through the appearing of our spirit, Jesus, Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am, yet I am not ashamed, because I know whom I believe, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. You may be seated. Let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you for this day. Go upstairs and get the boys and girls. Lord, we pray that you will just uh, meet with them. And Lord, may they come to know you. Lord, we pray that you'll be with each of us here to this, uh, this morning. Lord, may we listen to what you have to tell us. Lord, may we go to be more and more like you. Lord, I want to rid myself of me and let you speak thoroughly, freely through me. And Lord, I want to give you praise. And Lord, I want to give you thanksgiving today. In my most precious name, amen. amen. God is so good. Amen. All the time. Amen. We got in on the second part. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. I'm going to try to stand before you today, the first time since the Sunday before August 6th. So uh, if I get leaning, you'll understand, right? <laughs> but it is good to be able to stand today and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's been a long, almost three months, but God is able and he is so good. Here we have, uh, as I was thinking about the scripture today, the sermon today, I was thinking about uh, goals. You see, when this happened, I, I was on, I was sitting in my recliner with my feet up, and I was going through Facebook, and I saw this lady at a real nice function, and she had a beautiful dress on, and then she had white supportive tennis shoes on, which I can understand. She needed that support. But my prayer right then is, Lord, Please let me be able to wear some cute shoes. <laughs> I, that, so that was a that became my goal. Lord, I want to get out of these boots and this clod hopper shoe and wear some cute shoes. You see, I had bought these shoes uh, on <laughs> Facebook, and they had come I, I, before I hurt myself. They came right after I hurt myself, and I looked at those shoes and I thought, Oh Lord. A goal in my life is to be able to wear these shoes again, you know, these shoes. That was a goal. In, and as I was thinking about that, I thought, you know, we, we all need goals. And as lame as that is, and that's pretty lame to have a goal to be able to wear cute shoes again. I understand that. My physical goal is to be able to walk like I'd walked before wear the shoes I wore them before. But those are physical goals. What about my spiritual goals? 
If I would have to wear be in that wheelchair the rest of my life, that would have been something. But more important than that goal of getting out of that wheelchair, leaving this walker behind, is the spiritual goal that I have in my walk with Christ. Amen. We all need to have goals in our lives. We never know where life is going to take us. Amen? Amen. Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 9. In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. <laughs> Boy, did that hit me between the uh, eyes. You see, we never know what might happen. Even so, it is good to set goals in life, especially spiritual goals. What does it say if, we do, if you don't have a vision that people perish? Isn't a goal kind of a vision kind of a goal to have? We want to go forward. And it is so important. The scripture here this morning shows us the four goals that God wants each and every one of us to make. The first goal is seek to communicate your love. Seek to communicate your love. We need to make the effort to express our love for others. I'll say that during this time of being laid up, I felt very loved. Probably more love than I have around any other time in my life. And I appreciate that so much. And I, I thank God for it, all of you and all that. But here, one of the main things Paul did in the, in the scripture, uh, verse 1 through 4, he's talking about communicate your love. Express your love. Let's go for the first four verses again. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Then it, the caption says, encouragement to be faithful. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Here are these first four verses. In verse 2, there, Paul say, what is he saying? He's addressing Timothy. He said, my dear son, my dear son. Paul wanted Timothy to know, and God wants us to let other people know that we care for him deeply. What a goal. We need to make sure that we let people know that we care for them. Not just in the fleeting moments, but we truly care for them. There's so many people that are out there hurting because they think no one cares. I tell you, last week I sang that song about being uh, through it all, lonely. All that. I tell you what, four walls climbs in to you when you're not used to it. People need to know that we really deeply care for them. Just as Paul says here to Timothy, oh, he says, my dear son. You see, he had put his loving arms around Timothy. He had made him part of his family. And we need to make those that we come in contact with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. We also need to let people know we are dedicated to them. Let's go to that third verse there. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience. As night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. It said as night and day I constantly remember you. That's just not saying that, oh, once in a while if I happen to see your name somewhere I'll think of you. No, it means that you really care enough about them that they come to your mind's eye constantly. Through all this time, many times, and I've had to, this is a goal of mine that I'm more, that I get better on that. You see, we all can have, get better at things, amen, towards reaching our goal. I thought many of you, during this time of being laid up, and I prayed for you, but I didn't let you know that. See, we need to have the goal of letting people know we really care about them, that we really love them. 
that we're thinking about them. The, the dedication we need is to let people know that we are dedicated to them. We need to let them know we desire to be with them. That fourth verse, what's it telling us there? Recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. He longs to see Timothy. There he's saying, oh man, oh wow, I really long to see you. The desire is there. Paul let his young friend know that he wanted to see him. We have friends, and we do we long to see them? Do we long to have them in church with us? Do we invite them? Do we care for them? Do we show that we really care for them, that we want to be with them, we want to see them? I wonder how our, our little world would change if we reached out to others and said, Man, I long to see you. I've missed you so much. In all these ways, Paul was communicating his love to, for Timothy. And God wants us to do the same. He wants us to express our love to others. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing. It's just enough up. Amen. God wants us to communicate our love to others. Not just a fleeting moment, but really love them. Really dedicate to let them know how much you want to see with see them, that you want to be with them. There are all kinds of ways to show love. Paul wrote a couple letters to Timothy, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. My friends, we have it so easy today. We can go what they call it snail mail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is so great to get something in the mail. We have it easy. We have a thing called texting and emailing. We have our cell phones we take with us everywhere we go. <laughs> we have it easy to let people know that we love them, that we care for them, that we're dedicated to try to let them know that they're important. The first goal of this scripture here this morning is express your love. Is that a goal that you can have today, that you can express your love more and more to others? Oh, may it be, may it be so. Express your love. On the day before Christmas in 1980, over in Anderson, South Carolina, Richard Bellinger's mother was busy wrapping presents. The mom was so busy wrapping presents that she asked her seven-year-old Richard to shine her shoes. Soon Richard came back with a big smile on his face, and he presented the shoes to his mom for an ins inspection. She was so pleased with the work that he had done that she gave him a quarter. Christmas morning, Richard's mom put on her shoes and, to go to church, but she noticed that there was a lump in one of her shoes. She took off that sh her shoe off, and inside she found a, a quarter wrapped up in this crinkled up paper. Richard had written a note on that crumpled up piece of paper, and it said, I done it for love. I done it for love. Five simple words. I done it for love. Hear that little boy scribble that little five words, simple words. But what a message. What a message that was. I done it for love. Needless to say, that was the best Christmas present that mother got that year and for years and ever. I done it for love. Your expression of love can be have a big impact on someone else. God wants us to communicate our love to other people. Seek to communicate your love. Make it a goal in your life. Goal one, express your love. That's what Paul is telling here in Timothy for us to do today. Express our love. Let others know how important they are. 
Oh, a lot of times we have good intentions. Man, if every intention I had got done, if I had a secretary in my mind and would do all those things, wow, would I get a lot done. But that's an excuse. Express our love. What a goal. May that be our goal more and more. Express our love to those we come in contact. The second goal is seek to be a contagious Christian. What a great goal. A contagious Christian is the kind of Christian who spreads their faith to other people. Years ago when I became pastor, we had the, I got the series of being a contagious Christian. Was it Bill Higgins that wrote that? We, we did some Wednesday nights on it, how to share, share the gospel and be, be a contagious Christian. Here in verse 5, we see, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. You see, Timothy's grandmother and mother were contagious Christians. If anyone catches anything from me, I hope they catch my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. May this be the one time we want to be contagious. Amen? Amen. Go, you can go out to lunch and say, yeah, the pastor told me to be contagious. <laughs> <laughs> but what a thing. We need to be a contagious Christian. There's people beyond these walls, even our families and everything, that they need to catch our faith. We need to be contagious. How can we achieve the goal of being a contagious Christian? First thing, well, we have to have, faith has to dwell in our hearts. You see, you can't be contagious unless you have the disease, isn't that right? We can't be contagious Christians unless we have that faith inside us. Unless we have that walk with us. That fifth verse there talks about Lois and grandmother and, and Eunice and, and then Timothy. Sincere faith was passed down. First lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother, and I am persuaded now lives in you. Three generations there. Wow. We can all be contagious to our friends, our neighbors, our relatives. Those people we come in contact with. Do we have enough faith that it just explodes out when we meet somebody? That's being contagious. May we be a contagious Christian for the Lord Jesus Christ. For us to be contagious, we need that sincere faith that lives down deep in our heart. We have, need the faith of God's word and God's love and died on the cross and Jesus rose and eternal life for all who put their trust in him. You see, all of that genuine faith, this kind of genuine faith, though, it has to be developed. You don't start, you don't come to the altar and ask Christ into your heart and all of a sudden you have faith. Of course, it does say in the Bible, just if you have a faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. As we grow in Christ, and keep on growing and growing. How much more faith should we have that we can move anything that comes our way? Amen. You see, faith has to be developed as we get closer and closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. My faith is more today than it was yesterday. Because I have seen God's presence in the people. And I have seen God answer prayer. Amen. Amen. Paul is trying to develop and strengthen Timothy's faith. For us to be contagious, our faith has to be developed. But then, faith has to be delivered. Faith has to be delivered. Genuine faith dwell first in grandmother and, and then in the mother. They didn't keep it to themselves. If no one would have told us about Jesus, where would we be at today? 
It is our obligation to deliver the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's someone out there, there might be some ones out there that needs the Lord and you're the only one that can deliver that to them. People that I can reach, maybe you can't. And I know there's people you can reach that I can't. Faith has to be delivered. And that's what this mother and this grandmother did. They passed it on to Timothy. Are we passing it on? May it be so. The more we develop our faith, the more we'll be able to deliver our faith. If we go to 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 14 and 15. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and th through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. That's a lot of people, those who are being saved and those who aren't. We are to be the aroma of Christ, to be the fragrance of Christ. And I don't mean some of that yucky perfume either. <laughs> the sweet smell of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. What kind of spiritual fragrance are we giving out to our world? Oh, we're emitting a fragrance. Are we emitting the best fragrance we could ever have? To give to someone else. There's a story of a young woman who was nervous about being her boyfriend's parents for the first time. Some of you got guys and gals know about that? She wanted to look her absolute best. And she glanced in the mirror, the full length mirror, and she noticed that her black shoes looked dingy. Not wanting to be late, she gave them a fast swipe with a paper towel that was on the counter. But what she didn't know that it that paper towel had bacon grease on it. <laughs> when the girl got to the parents' home, she was greeted by them and by their spoiled, rotten, cranky, mean little poodle. That dog got a whiff of that bacon grease on that girlfriend's shoes. She followed that dog followed that girl all over the house all night long. When she got ready to go, her boyfriend's parents said, Our dog Cleo really likes you, dear. She is an excellent judge of character. We are delighted to welcome you into our family. <laughs> <laughs> My friends, we've got a fragrance a whole lot more attractive than bacon grease. I know some of you like bacon. <laughs> There's nothing like the fragrance of Jesus Christ. What kind of fragrance are we giving off? The fragrance that's attractive, that spiritual fragrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a living faith in our Lord, and He wants us to, li to live our lives that attract people to Him. May we exude that fragrance of Christ to those that we come in contact with. God wants us to be contagious Christians. That's a goal that we should have for our lives. Oh, are you expressing your love to others? Is that a goal that you have? Are you being a contagious Christian? Is that a goal that you have? We should seek to build courage in other believers. If we go to verse, verse 6 and 7. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power of love and of self-discipline. Do we build up the courage 
of other believers. Paul knew Timothy was afraid that he needed help. Remember where Paul was? He was in prison. He was going to be executed. Paul had suffered, but Timothy was suffering too. And Paul cared about Timothy. He didn't, he put away his fears for himself. He loved, he expressed his love so great that he went, he wanted Timothy not to suffer. Timothy was probably under a lot of stress. Probably thought he wasn't going to make it. But that wasn't true. If we belong to Jesus Christ, we are his and we are on our way to heaven. And God will give us the strength that we need. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, we know Timothy got discouraged. And we do get discouraged at times. Paul wanted to help build Timothy's his courage up. How did he do it? First, Paul urged Timothy to rekindle the flames. We go back to that sixth verse. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Have you ever been at a, or maybe you have a wood burning stove, fireplace? Or you've been on a hay ride and you had those old bonfires about this time of the year. And if you sat there long enough, the, the flames would kind of go down. And what would they do? They'd go up, whether it's your fireplace or whatever it is, and they would stir it around. And pretty soon that flame would come back up and it would glow brightly. You see, we need to stir up the fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives. This is true on every spiritual level. When we ask Christ in our hearts and he lives in us, the Holy Spirit of Jesus is like a good fire in our hearts. And we need to keep that fire stirred up. Nothing more would the enemy want to do but have our flame in our hearts go dim. We need to turn the things of God over in our hearts and fan the flames of our spiritual life so it keeps on burning brightly. How's your flame going today? Is that a goal to keep it burning bright? We need to help our Christian friends to rekindle their spiritual flame because we know circumstances happen and sometimes our flame gets a little low. Help, may we help others rekindle that flame so that their flame can be glowing brightly. <coughs> Second thing, reminded them of the, of the gifts. Verse 6, again, flame the gift of God which is in you. The gift of God that is in with in you. Everyone here has gifts that God's given you. All of us have different gifts because we are all part of a family. Some are hands, some are feet, the scripture says. Remind each other of the gifts God's given you. You see, I've seen so many people, God's given them a gift, and they take their eyes off of Christ and they never use it. You know what? It never really comes back the same. I used to play the piano a lot. And when you quit playing it for a while, you kind of have decrepit hands. Believe it or not, I used to sing some, but I quit singing so much, and now I can't reach those notes anymore. You see, we need to be reminded God has given us each one different gifts. And if he's given you that gift, he wants you to use it for his honor and his glory. Yeah. Oh, let's help others remind them and encourage them of their gifts. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. That's pretty good, huh? We have a spirit of power, of love. We have that gift of self-discipline. You see, we can have a personal courage and help others to have that courage also. Woo! Amen? Amen. God 
didn't call us to be timid in our own walk. So what the scripture said, isn't it? Do we believe the scripture? He did not give us that. He gave us power to proclaim the gospel. Let's set a goal to make an effort to be courageous in our walk more than we ever have before. Yeah. The Lord could come at any time. We see the signs of it everywhere. Yeah. Let's don't be timid. But we have, because God's given us that power. That's a gift he's given all of us here to proclaim the gospel, to share with others then to seek and carry out God's call in our life. Let's go ahead and read those last verses there. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in the suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard that what I have entrusted to him for that day. Woo! That, should, that 12 verse, would you put that 12 verse back up? That should be our theme song. That should be our theme verse. We are called to serve. We as individuals in the church are called to make this our own verse. We might suffer. Yes, it's getting, we can see that more and more in America that we might be suffering just as he was. But I'm not ashamed. Can we stand up and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because I know whom I have believed it and am per persuaded that he is able, I'm going back to the song, <laughs> to keep that which I have entrusted unto him against that day. Woo! God calls us to his cause. Paul served the cause of Jesus Christ, and so should we. God calls us to his cause, and he calls us to his companionship. He wants us to have that close relationship with him. Not a far off, glancing at a wall, but a close relationship. That companionship that we can be so close, we can hear his heart beat. What a goal we should have there. I know whom I have believed in. We know Jesus in a personal way. God calls us to his companionship and he calls us to have confidence in him. I am persuaded that he is able. I have confidence that he is able no matter what I go through. Our confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Paul could say, and we can say that this morning, I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day that I stand face to face with him in glory. Paul was persuaded and we too should be persuaded that God loves us, died on the cross for us. He rose again from the dead. Also persuaded that Jesus is preparing a home for us in heaven. Preparing Kathy a pink Cadillac. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? He's preparing a place for us. Mm -hmm. God calls us to have confidence in Him, and He calls us to fully commit our lives to Him. I didn't say half full, did I? Fully do doesn't leave any space whatsoever. God calls us to fully commit our lives to him. Oh, Paul committed everything to the Lord. He committed his life, his soul, and his future to Jesus. So should we. Godly goals like these are the greatest goals we can ever have in life. 
with God's goal in our lives, we can weather any storm, any broken bone, anything we go through, we can weather that. And my friends, we can help other people along the way. Some of the storms you've gone through, some of the storms I've gone through, I've been able to take that storm and when someone else goes through it, I can put my arms around them and say, I know we're different, but I can sympathize with you. But let me tell you this, God brought me through and he can bring you through too. Amen. No matter how young we are, no matter how old we are, or how in between we are those two things, we all need goals. God help us set and keep the goals in our lives. My friends, we all need goals. We all need goals. I, like I said, it's pretty, pretty sad that my goal was to be able to wear pretty shoes someday. But at the time, that's what I thought about. But boy, did I whack myself on between the eyes when I realized that, that goal is nothing. Yeah. I need these goals that I preached about today. That's the goals that are important. That should be the goals for all Christians. What is your goal today? Do you have goals? Or are you just biding day by day? Oh, let's be like Paul. As you talk to Timothy, let's set up goals. Let's express love more than we ever have before. Is that a goal that you can relate to? May we be contagious Christians. But my friends, be contagious. Just as we are physically when we have a disease, it's in us. Be contagious Christians, we have to have the Lord Jesus Christ in us. How's your aroma? Do you have the fragrance of Christ today? I preached this sermon to myself last night, as I always do the night before. And I'll admit, tears came to my eyes. Lord, help me to be more and more like you. Help me to express love like I've never done before. Help me to be that contagious Christian. You see, I revamped my goal from wearing pretty shoes to being what God wanted me to be. God calls us to be fully committed to him in our lives to make our goals his. Would you stand? How's your goals today? Have you set different goals than you had before when you came in here? May we all set the right goals set the goals of living my life fully committed to Him. Fully committed to reaching out to others. If someone were to ask someone that you knew very well about your Christian walk, would they say that you were contagious? That you had that aroma that you took with you everywhere, not just on Sunday mornings, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Every head bowed and every eye closed. God's speaking to your heart. The altar's open this morning. Something about that step saying, I want to do more for you, Lord. I want to set my goals today and I want to keep those right in front of me. I want to be a goal setter today. Is there 
that raised their hand and said, Pastor, would you pray for me? I'm going to set goals. See that hand? See those hands? Do you have goals this morning? Are you keeping your eyes on those goals? Precious Father, as we close this service, help us not close what we've heard from you today. Lord, help us to have the goals that you would have us to have. Lord, help us to reach out to others, express our love to them. Lord, I pray that we will be contagious around here more than we ever have before. Lord, help others just want what we, what we have in our lives. Lord, help us to be so close to you that we develop our faith, that we get closer and closer so that we do have you, that aroma of you just rigging through us. Because we know you are the drawing force. People need you and they want something to fill that void in their lives. Lord, help us to be totally committed to you. Help us to live our lives for you. Lord, may we set goals. And may we live by those goals and, and strive day by day. And Lord, as we leave this to your house, may we take our being contagious with us. Lord, may our goals be right in the forefront of our mind. In thy name, amen.